Okay. Our next question is from Tom on beer and blood sugar. Rob and Nikki, thank you both so much for the work you do to educate the paleo keto community. I've been paleo for nearly six years now and keto for two due to a suggestion given me after having a colectomy and still not feeling good. The results I've experienced are nothing short of miraculous. This has led me to become a huge advocate for the lifestyle and to share it with anyone who will listen. I do heating and air conditioning service, which affords me the opportunity to share with many people. <laughs> My question is this, you have mentioned many times that we should do as many N equal one experiments to see what works for us individually. I have been keeping tabs on my blood sugars, blood pressure, oxygen and heart rate levels, as well as several clinical blood tests. I don't visit the doctor very often since all they want to do is shove drugs in me every time I go in. Over the years, I've been able to hone in on the majority of foods or lifestyles that make me feel good and the ones that make me feel not so good. That said, I want to pose a question to you. I've done this test over and over and I'm very shocked by the results. If I have a typical dinner with a salad or veggies, some sort of meat, then pair that with low carb wine or tequila, lime and soda water, both very low carb drinks, my blood sugars will be somewhere between 130 and 180 two hours later. However, if I have beer, typically dark because I prefer the porters and the stouts, and check my blood sugars two hours later, I'm usually below 100 and sometimes as low as 80 or 78. I have tested these variables over and over throughout this past year, yes I like my drink, and I get the same results. However, I have noticed that the lighter beers, such as ales or lighter IPAs, do not keep my blood sugars quite as low. Do you know of anything that might explain this phenomenon? I have many more questions I would like to ask you, but I'll leave it at this one for now. Again, thank you both for all you have done and are doing to keep this community going. My son keeps telling me that I should, st should start my own blog and podcast to help spread the word about this lifestyle. When he does, I always mention that I have no definable credentials such as yours, so I'm not convinced anyone would even listen to it. So instead, I point him and many others to your podcast and web website along with Chris's and Mark's. You're all very educational and the cornerstones of this community. Keep up the good work. Well, I'll just throw out there that possibly the smartest person I've encountered in this space and someone that knows metabolism far better than I do is an HVAC <laughs> <laughs> guy, uh, Mike Julian. Mike is a fucking genius. So uh, don't count yourself out, although I think he makes pretty darn good money doing that. And so it doesn't, it, it mainly keeps the people like myself who are supposed to be experts actually on point with what we're talking about. Um, you know, this is really interesting. And I, I don't know if we, it, like we, uh, Squatchy puts together these these uh, batches of questions and then I read through them and we try to get some show notes where appropriate. I know there were some questions around like blood sugar levels and alcohol. So I don't know if we did it already or it's coming up, but um, there's this kind of wacky phenomena where uh, alcoholics tend to have very low blood sugar levels and very low A1C levels because the, the alcohol tends to suppress blood sugar production. And there's a whole, it, it, it's oxidative priority prioritization uh, stuff. So it's, it's kind of interesting, but um, I don't know why we would see that in this case. My only thought is that there may be some sort of an antioxidant effect going on with the beer that, that maybe it's mitigating kind of a stress or inflammatory response. Whereas like with most people, they might get a stress or inflammatory response. And, and in this case, maybe not. I mean, the fact that we're going, if I had initially seen this and, and somebody just said, hey, when I eat X, Y meal with alcohol versus without alcohol and with alcohol, the blood sugars are lower, assuming that we're we're not, you know, doing like sugary margarita right. drinks or, or something like that. But the the alcohol meal is lower than I would say, oh, this is some of the like alcohol dehydrogenase, oxidative prioritization stuff that happens in the liver. That's not the case. We're comparing alcohol to alcohol. And so I don't, I'm, I'm kind of guessing on this one that there may be kind of an antioxidant effect with the beer. They they do have antioxidants in there. And so mm -hmm. it, it, it could be in the darker beers. Dark well, it, it will absolutely have more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there could be an effect there. Um, I'm actually going to float this one by Chris Master John and see what he has to say on that. But it, it's a, uh, it's perplexing. And I, 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 this is definitely like <laughs> lobbing a dart over the, 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 you know, the refrigerator, and hoping that I get something. So, yeah. Do people lob darts over refrigerators? 
If you're a kid and you have friends on the other side of the refrigerator, I'm thinking more refrigerator box, particularly okay, because Zoe has like, been shaking us down for that. This is the okay. literal world that I live in <laughs> well, where like I'm any like, attempt at an analogy. Wall, there's usually a wall or cupboards behind or above. So where does the dart go? Okay, never mind. It's a refrigerator box. <laughs> Zoe's been shaking us down to get in a refrigerator box so she can, you know, build a castle or whatever she's going to do out the of it. And, and because I'm struggling currently to just string two sentences together, then I kind of failed on that. So yeah, more All coffee right. and right. you, 